Hello and welcome to Be a Tier the German Engineer Explains, Oxygen Not Included. Yes, today we are back with another explainer video and there is a good reason for it. Because about a year and a half ago I made a video about infinite storages and it needs an update really, really badly. And that is exactly what we are going to do today. But first of all, let's get started with solid storages. Right here in front of us, we can see the general method of storing any sort of solid. And that is of course storage bins. And one of those storage bins can hold up to 20 tons, which is a hell of a lot. Not gonna lie about it, but still, they are taking up a hell of a lot of space and they are not the prettiest things in the world. So, what is a better method? Well, right here we certainly have a better method. And this method does involve an automatic dispenser, or in my case here, two of them. The principle is very simple. We are just going to put all the debris into one single tile. However we want to do that, that is totally fine. In this case here, I just use two of them, have them face each other, and make sure that our output nozzles are on the exact same tile. The only other thing left to do now is that we have to select our automatic dispenser and we need to set it to sweep only and then select all the different things that we actually want to put into this tile here to be stored. Another benefit to this build is that this automatic dispenser here does not require power to be used by a duplicate, therefore no power wire is required at all. Of course, we also have a couple downsides. For example, if we put something like polluted dirt in here that will off gas, it will definitely off gas into our base or wherever we have the thing here built. And that is usually a problem. The other downside we have is in the core and you can see that I even have two tiny little statues on the left and on the right right here but we are still right here at negative 50 and here at negative 62 and theoretically at least our dupes could walk straight through here and pick up this bad decor value every single time they do it. So how exactly could we improve upon this a little bit more? And right here we have it, it's a very simple solution. You can see it, it's just a 2D pit with a single tile right here and a little bit of fluid. In my case, I use crude oil and 800 kilograms of it. And with this tiny little pit right here, we are solving all of our problems because the off-gassing is solved by the crude oil down here. Yes, that is all it takes. Nothing is going to off-gas anymore. And at the same time, when we take a look into our decor value, if a dupe comes by here, the most he will get is plus 22 because he never has to get into the actual pit and it's getting a lot worse down here. So we can see it. All of our problems are solved with this build right here. And I would highly recommend you use it in your base unless you're, of course, against infinite storages which is of course absolutely valid all by itself right here we have the intended way of storing gas at least intended by the game because when we take a look here these are of course gas reservoirs and one of them holds 150 kilograms i have a total of 12 of them right here and all of this here let's take a look here occupies a space of 240 tiles which means with this method right here we can store roughly 1800 kilograms worth of gas in an area of 240 tiles that doesn't sound very efficient now does it well let's take a look if we can do that a little bit better Right here in front of us, I have a little box and this box here has exactly 240 tiles. But of course, the outside is only walls, so those are not really usable. But the inside has 180 usable tiles. These tiles right here, I had them filled with this gas vent right here until it overpressured. So there is nothing here, nothing in the sandbox, nothing in developer mode. All this here was filled only by this gas vent. And we are having 2002 grams per tile all over the place. It's nice and equal. And if we do a tiny little bit of math, on here in those 240 total tiles right here we are only storing 363 kilograms isn't that crazy yes this year stores almost nothing if you remember just a few moments ago we were storing 1800 kilograms in the exact same area so let's take a look what happens when we exchange the gas vent for a high pressure gas vent now this box right here is filled with 20 kilograms and yes once again it has been filled by this high pressure gas vent here on the bottom right and not with the sandbox or anything else this is just what happens in the game if you try to fill a room with a high pressure gas vent and we are at 20 kilograms of course we still have our 180 tiles and when we take 180 times 20 we get 3600 kilograms that is a hell of a lot better now we have doubled our capacity but this is still really not that much so let's take a look if we can do that a little bit better. 
Right here, I've prepared a few different builds, and in this one here, we have oxygen at about 3,000 kilograms per tile, something like that. Here we have nuclear fallout at over 4,000 per tile. Here we have polluted oxygen, again over 3, and on the right, we have chlorine at 305 kilograms. Yes, that is per tile. What I just said, every single tile that has oxygen in here has about 3,000 kilograms. So, let's take a look how they work. It is probably most easily visible in the F4 overlay. We have oxygen right here. Yeah, and we have some kind of wall around it. We have a pump in here so we can get it out. But most importantly, we have a gas vent right here. And then on top of this gas vent, we have a liquid. In my case, this liquid is crude oil. But theoretically, you can use any kind of liquid which is not off-gassing. The only thing you need to be careful with is temperature because you can see it in this case here I'm pumping very hot nuclear fallout into here just for the fun of it. But the problem is if this here would be water instead of crude oil it would have boiled off a long long time ago and therefore destroyed our infinite storage. So you need to be careful to match the liquid in here with the temperature of the gas that you're pumping in. The mechanic why this here is working is that this gas went here and we can see it over here yes it overpressures at 2000 grams and those 2000 grams don't matter it just needs to be any mass doesn't matter if it is a gas or a liquid in our case we are putting a liquid in here gases and liquids do not mix so in our f4 overlay we can barely see it though we have here the nuclear fallout and here on the bottom we have crude oil and these two will never ever mix so what is the gas vent doing in this case well it cannot put it out here but it has to go somewhere we have a solid here and there and on the bottom it can't go anywhere into these three tiles around it so it has to put it above and therefore we are basically disabling the overpressure mechanic of the gas vent the other nice thing is that gases do not ever break any solid walls no matter how much we have in there gases do not support this mechanic in the game therefore we can store as much as we want in any single given tile another thing i would highly recommend is that you have always at least two of them right beside each other these here on the left that they do work but they are prone to breaking and i do not wish that upon anybody in a real game because every once in a while this crude oil right here can just magically disappear you can see it it's kind of messing around right here it wants to go somewhere else it's trying but every once in a while it just gets deleted especially if you have a speed mod like me for example the speed that i'm using right now is highly dangerous for our two infinite storages over here on the left but really on the right side we shouldn't have a problem at all and right here in front of us, we have my favorite kind of infinite gas storage. Yes, it is a very compact design with four gas vents and two gas pumps right here. And of course, there are obvious benefits to this build. For example, if we only have a one single gas pipe coming in when we build it, it doesn't matter that we have three more because maybe down the road in a few hundred cycles, we have another source of the same gas that we want to store as well. And then we are flexible and we can just easily plop it in there. And of course, our gas pumps right here two of them are always good because one of them can only pump 500 grams per second where the capacity of an insulated gas pipe or any gas pipe for that matter is 1000 grams per second with two gas pumps we can max it out and that is of course exactly what we want before we move on though i want to show you the f2 overlay so we can take a look at the power it's very simple and straightforward the f7 overlay we can just see the piping coming in and the two pipes coming out from our gas pumps right here and in the automation overlay we can see i hooked up a signal switch so i can turn these pumps here on and off whenever i want which can be helpful at certain times for sure and that should be everything you need to build this system here exactly as I did. And just in case you want to know, I used one kilogram of crude oil per tile for our gas vents right here. And then one last thing you can see, I used a bunch of different materials right here to actually build it. We have tiles, insulated tiles, carpeted tiles, metal tiles, we have window tiles, bunker tiles and plastic tiles. Yes, any single tile will work as long as it doesn't let any gas through. It's literally simple and I hope you enjoy these builds in your own base. But now, let's move on to liquids. And just like with the gases, right here in front of us we have the intended way of storing any kind of fluid. And that is of course a liquid reservoir. A liquid reservoir takes a total space of 6 tiles and it can hold 5000 kilograms, which is actually not too bad. Right here in front of us we have a total of 30 of those liquid reservoirs. And when we take a look, they are taking up a space of 220 tiles. If we go one further, once again we are at 240 tiles because the floor needs to be calculated in as well. So 240 tiles just like before and we are getting 150 tons worth of storage out of this right here. So how could we do this differently? 
Right here in front of us, I built an open room surrounded with airflow tiles except on the bottom because the bottom doesn't matter, but it has the exact same size. It is 240 tiles if you calculate the floor in, which of course we have to. So how much water do we store in here? And of course, before I forget it, the water in here was filled by this def liquid pump and this liquid vent right here. I didn't put it in. That was not the sandbox mode or the def mode or anything like it. This is exactly how it would work in the actual game. So, how much usable space do we actually have? We have 180 tiles, and when we take a look in here, we have 999.7 kilograms of 1009, 1019, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. So the lower we go, the more it gets, but to make the math a little bit easier, we are just going to assume that each and every one of those tiles here holds exactly one ton. And that makes the math not just easier, but extremely easy. 180 times one makes 180 tons. So with this method right here, we gained a 30 ton capacity increase in storage capacity over the exact same area on our map. That is not bad, but I have a feeling it could get a little bit better. And right here in front of us, we have the simplest version of an infinite liquid storage. So how does it work and how much do we actually have in here? Well, let's take a look. We have 11 tons in here, 14 tons right there, 9 tons right there, and another 9 tons right there. What is what? Roughly 12 tons per tile. And we only have 4 tiles with a total size of 20 tiles. Yes, 20 tiles are currently holding about 48 tons of liquid. Isn't that nice? So how exactly does it work? Well, we have manual airlocks right here. And there are a few different tiles and buildings in the game that are not prone to pressure. And the manual airlock is one of them. But how exactly are we tricking this liquid went right here? Well, when we take a look into our F4 overlay, we can see it a little bit clearer. Down here, everything is water. And when I built this thing here, I did not vacuum it out. We can see we have oxygen all around it. And in here, of course, was oxygen as well. But when we filled it with water, the oxygen was slowly but steadily pushed upwards. And then it ended up in this tile right here. And we can see it. All the oxygen in those five tiles was apparently 3,153.2 grams and they are now stuck right there. And once again, liquids and gases do not ever mix. Now our gas is over our liquid vent. Our liquid vent, just like before, does not know where to put its water. It cannot put it to the left, to the right or onto the top. So it will put it down here. And therefore, we will just override its overpressure value right here, which is 1000 kilograms. And therefore, we are just putting more and more water into here. It's literally this simple. And you can see the footprint is extremely small if you only need one pump. In our F2 overlay, we can see all the power we need for the system right here is only our liquid pump. And that is literally it. In F6, we can see we have a pump coming in with the water or whatever fluid we want to store. And of course, another pipe going out from our liquid pump. And then just as before, once again, I have right here an automation wire attached to a signal switch. And that is, of course, attached to our liquid pump. So we can turn it on and off whenever we want to. And that is the entirety of this build here. There is really nothing complicated about it. But let's take a look what all we can store. For example, right here we have, of course, water. Right here we have a slightly more unorthodox version and we are storing nuclear waste and of course the radiation is a little bit on the high side. Right here we are storing crude oil, of course, just like the others, absolutely no problem. Also petroleum is no issue at all. And even tons and tons of resin are not going to break our manual airlocks. Salt water is definitely no match for our manual airlocks either. And super coolant is pretty super as a coolant, but not as a breaker of airlocks. And I even found another fluid just to mess around with, and that is NAFTA. And this here is really just to demonstrate, it doesn't matter what kind of fluid you have, as long as you don't melt down your liquid pump, or better to say your manual airlock, you shouldn't have a problem at all. But liquid locks can also be built differently, and if you want to use airflow tiles, this here is the only method that works with manual airlocks. Both different methods will work just like a charm. But what is different right here? Well, instead of using a gas, and that is the obvious reason why airflow tiles do not work with that method, because the gas will escape, right here we are using a different liquid. In this example right here, we are pumping in ethanol, but down here on the bottom we have crude oil. The really important part about this build right here is the liquid down here on the bottom. Bottom, there are two conditions it needs to meet. First of all, it needs to be less than 1000 kilograms. I usually do 100 kilograms, it's more than sufficient. And second of all, it needs to be a liquid that is denser than the actual liquid that we are pumping in. In our case, again, it's ethanol, but down here on the bottom, we have crude oil. 
Here is a wonderful chart from the community created wiki for oxygen not included. It shows all the densities of all the different fluids on one tiny little map. And of course, I will link the entire article in the description down below. The exact same system right here can of course also be built with two different inlets and of course also with two liquid pumps. Don't forget the liquid pump will of course max out the insulated pipe so you need two different pipes coming out as well and we can see that in our F6 overlay and of course in F2 we can see our only power consumers are our two liquid pumps. Right here we have another relatively unorthodox build, but it is of course functional just like all the others. Right here in the middle our liquid vent with crude oil, we are pumping in water and we have a liquid pump on the left and on the right. So we have one input and two outputs, which is very nice. It takes up a little bit more space, but it is very symmetrical and honestly I'm a sucker for that. So far we have used airflow tiles as well as manual airlocks. Well, it of course also works with mechanized airlocks. So I built a system with one inlet and two pump outputs that is slightly more efficient, but not quite as beautiful as the last one. But of course it works just like a charm. Right here we have another version of the infinite liquid storage and of course it is built out of bunker doors because bunker doors do not break either under any kind of pressure. Would I recommend you using bunker doors to build your infinite storage? Well, probably not, but I wanted to make sure you guys know it so you can use it in case you should ever need it. And right here in front of us, we have the ultimate liquid lock. Yes, it combines everything that we have talked about. We have bunker doors, we have mechanized airlocks, we have manual airlocks, and we have airflow tiles, and you can see absolutely nothing is breaking, even though we have about 16 tons of water per tile in here. Nothing is happening at all. On top of that, I'm also using both methods down here. Once again, I use crude oil over the top of our liquid vent. And up here, I used oxygen just like before. I just built this here and filled it up. No problem at all. Our oxygen will automatically find its way to the liquid vent and prevent it from overpressuring. And now let's let it run so you can see that everything's working up here in the top. Of course, each and every one of our liquid vents is outputting no problem. And down here on the bottom, we have the exact same going on. With a total of 16 def liquid pumps pumping in here, we are pumping in 160 kilograms per second. And we can see there's not a single leak in any of our walls. Everything is working exactly the way it should. Right here in front of us, we have one bonus type of liquid lock because it's really just a different mechanic of how to fill it. Because you can see it, we do not have any input down here. And it's currently also not working. If I run the game, it is currently running. You can kind of see like the oxygen moving around, but the liquid vents are overpressured and nothing more is going in. So what can we do about that? Down here on the bottom left, we have all these airflow tiles all around here. These are just preventing those insulated tiles here from bursting. And then right here, I have a mechanized airlock. And down here, I have a manual airlock. They both could be manual. They both could be mechanized. It wouldn't make a difference at all. What is important right now is an F7. I have a line coming in with carbon dioxide, which hooks up to the input of a gas pipe. And on the top, I have oxygen. Oxygen is less dense than carbon dioxide and that's why it is going on to the top and the carbon dioxide on the bottom. I can come in here and first deconstruct our gas bridges. First the top and on the bottom. That really doesn't matter because what we are interested in is this piece of pipe right here. Or better to say these two here. This one here with oxygen and this one here with carbon dioxide. Now for this part right here I'm actually playing the game. You can see the water moving around that is running at one time speed exactly as it should. And now we need to deconstruct it in the order of density from low density to high density and the low density in this case is of course oxygen so we're going to deconstruct this tile right here and we can see the blob is forming the insulated gas pipe right here. I'm going to deconstruct it as well and we can see the effect immediately. We have a little bit of debris right there but our water tank is going to empty and it's going to empty quickly. Even though all of these pumps here are going to turn on slowly but steadily they will not be able to keep up with the amount of water we are draining out of here. So I will say let's watch that for a minute. We are going to turn up the speed and we will see how fast we can empty this tank here out even though we have all of these liquid vents here. Let's take a look while we are at it. So of 10 of them coming in here so that is 100 kilograms per second and they have no chance in hell to hold it up that is how fast we are draining it and it is all going into right here with an insane amount of speed 
And now within seconds, we have 21,000 kilograms. Yes, that's 21 tons. Yes, right in here. And even if I go ahead and I'm going to get rid of all these pumps right here, when we stop putting fresh water in, it doesn't matter because there's always a little bit of water that's going to be stuck here. Therefore, keeping this lock here alive, even if we add no new water or any other fluid for that matter at all. Once again, I highly recommend you check out my full video on this topic. And right here we have it. The entire tank is now empty and we still have 38 grams right here and 77 grams right there. And once again, in our F4 overlay, we can clearly see our oxygen and our carbon dioxide are still alive and we don't have a problem at all. We're going to turn those pumps here back on that I just deleted and it will just continue working without a problem. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like on the video and of course, comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And with that, I say thank you and peace.